the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about it's just a phase, and today we continue that theme. Remember, there are three specific things present in every phase. Significant relationships, present realities, and distinctive opportunities. A big shout out and thank you to Jenna last week for taking us through the specifics of significant relationships. She'll share uh, about distinctive opportunities next week. But this week, we're gonna focus in on present realities. What is a present reality? Well, Reggie Joyner and Kristen Ivey from The Phase Research talk about present realities as knowing where your kid is right now and seeking to understand how they are changing physically, mentally, relationally, emotionally, culturally, and morally in the current phase they are in. There's something significant that happens when we know our kids well. We wanna become students of them. As Joyner and Ivy write, the better you understand who kids are now, the better they'll understand who they're meant to be. St. Francis of Assisi uh, is credited with saying, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Figuring out the present reality of your kid is really a journey to understanding who they are, what their interests are, why, and, and how they are changing. Every kid changes in six fundamental ways in every phase. As we mentioned, it, these changes are, are physically, mentally, relationally, culturally, emotionally, and morally. As kids change physically and mentally, it's clear that when a physical change happens, but it, it t might take a little extra effort to see how they are changing mentally, to know when they can handle deeper conversations and more theologically rich discussions. Both are significant changes, just one is easier to see and understand than another. Through all six of these changes, we want to seek to understand. It is easiest to understand in relationship. As silly as it might sound, are you building a strong relationship with your kid through conversation and spiritual formation? Are you helping them ask good questions? To be comfortable doubting and wondering, to pursue what is true and right even when it is hard and, and takes more time. We don't just need to understand those six fundamental ways uh, they change in every phase. We also need to take time to spend with our kids in their world. When we seek to understand the world they live in, not the world we used to live in and not how their world looks from where we are sitting now, but the way their actual world is and how they see and understand and interpret their world, we show them how we value them, how we see them, and we're seeking to understand and love them well. This also gives us many opportunities to ask good questions, to point to Christ, and to disciple them along the way. Again, all this is done in relationship. Joyner and Ivy write, relationships bring clarity. When kids see themselves the way a loving adult sees them, it changes how they see themselves. We want our kids to see and know themselves as God, their Heavenly Father, does. That happens through relationship and intentional discipleship as we engage them in their world and help them live in their world with a biblical lens and worldview. They continue writing, God designed our emotional and moral formation to require a relational investment. That's also why it's so important to help kids grow up and learn how to respond to a relationship with God. He wired every kid so they can know him as their ultimate guide. As we guide our kids along in these present realities, we do so from a foundation of the love of God toward us. It is through that love and by that love that we guide our kids to know God and fall deeply in love with him. I want to encourage you to take a minute to evaluate your relationships. First with God. Are you spending enough time with him? Are you engaging in prayer and Bible study as more than just checking off your list, but instead as something that actually transforms you? And second, with your kid or your kids. Are you engaging them intentionally in relationship? I can confess that some days I let pass by without intentionality or purpose. We just survived that day. But I want that to be the exception, not the norm. How can you make your parenting norm intentional engagement and discipleship? Make a plan and start acting it out, giving yourself grace when you fail and encouragement when you succeed. Thank you, Ben, for that message. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode of Fridays Are For Families. We place a high value on discipleship, especially in the home, because we believe that strong disciples are made at home. That is why we have a heart to do what we can to empower and equip you to grow as a disciple of Jesus yourself and a disciple maker of your kid. If you have specific questions for information you would like to hear about, we invite you to share them with us either commenting on this video or on YouTube or Facebook or by emailing us at family at See you next week.